left his cruise for us um, even before I became the pastor of this church uh, last year. And so uh, when y'all was looking at me to become your pastor, I asked, hey, could I, uh, can we still go on that cruise that somebody bought for us last year? And they said, sure, go ahead. So we took advantage of that. We went on a cruise last week. But I now feel a lot more sorry for those uh, disciples that were in the boat with Jesus when the storm came along. Because <laughs> I had great fun until Friday and a storm came along. And I did not know an 880 foot long ship could go like this. <laughs> there was people flying around. I was watching Tammy. I was catching her all over the place. <laughs> I have, <clears throat> I forgot to buy the seasickness pills before we got on board, and boy howdy did I ever get sick. <clears throat> but, having said that, it was a blast up until Friday, <laughs> but I, I tell you what, I did miss y'all really, really bad, and uh, I was praying for everybody every day, and uh, it was a... Uh, a blessing just to roll in at 10 o'clock last night. And so, praise God for, to see you all here today. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. Lord, thanks for bringing everybody out today and all the smiles and, and the hugs and, and handshakes that we've all received this morning. Lord, we all love each other. Lord, we're brothers and we're sisters. And we love each other, we look after each other, and we take care of each other. And we lift each other up when uh, we need help. Lord, we just ask you to be in our service today and let that sweet, sweet fellowship uh, continue. We love you. Bless our church today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Just got a couple announcements. <clears throat> the uh, uh, monthly deacons meeting that's usually held on the uh, first uh, uh, Sunday night after evening service is canceled the next week. So you guys won't miss so much of the Super Bowl, okay? So that'll be uh, tonight. So Deacon's meeting next Sunday night. Um, our, as you have found out, there, there was at least one person who came early today. She was the early bird back there. <laughs> but we did change our service times back to how they were before. Sunday school starts at 9.45 in the morning. Uh, morning worship starts at 10.55. And tonight, evening service will be at 6 p.m. I'll try not to keep you too long tonight, but we will have a uh, service tonight. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have church at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. The youth and kids also uh, meet on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then for the Brave, on Tuesday mornings at 6.15, we have a men's prayer meeting. And uh, you'd be pretty brave to be at a prayer meeting at 6 15 in the morning. But we got a bunch of guys who are. Uh, on February 12th at 6 p.m., we're having a Valentine's banquet. Um, and it's going to feature a taco bar. And my son Josh is going to be playing some music. And uh, I'll be uh, speaking a little bit as well. And then on February 23rd, um, we will begin fundraising for youth camps uh, with a luncheon. And uh, so that will be exciting as well. So there's a lot going on. Um, our baby bottle boomerang, uh, we're all out of baby bottles. So if your baby bottles are already filled up, uh, please bring them. Are, are there some now? Oh, good, good. Okay, we have some. So if anyone wants to pick up another baby bottle, or maybe your first one is to uh, support the uh, uh, our center up there in Cisco, the open door that uh, helps uh, pregnant ladies and women and families. And so uh, we want to have all this back by February 16th, I believe it is. And so, having said all that, let's sing some songs and praise the Lord. Our uh, memory verse for the month, if you've got a new one for uh, February, if y'all say that with me. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God, it is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Psalms 102 and 3. Birthday. 
birthdays and anniversaries. First Sunday of the month. If you're having a birthday or an anniversary this month, if you want to participate, penny a year, dollar a year, whatever you want to put in. It all goes toward the kids' camps. Kids' camps, Daniel? Grand's birthday. Happy birthday this month, Grand. Don? Brother, sister, grandson. Go. Who? My sister, Auntie. Who's the honor? Grayson. Brother in law, Miss Mary.
message today. Thank you for this beautiful way and for the rain that you have blessed us with. We ask this in our name. Amen. 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 number 140 down at the cross.
you today, Lord. I decide for are doing behind the cross and let us speak for you. Let's just go throughout this week, uh, worshiping and serving you in everything we do. In your name, amen. 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 Jesus rose from the dead, 
And then it goes to how you pray and ask Jesus to save you. But it does more than that. Maybe sometimes we're scared to talk, right? Well, listen to this. I'll use the microphone so everybody can hear. Hi, Ellie. You can come up, Ellie, if you want. So what you do is you just start looking at it. At the picture, we'll start with the Garden of Eden. Uh, the children's sermon. So we got things going on around here. 
And hey, what in the world are you guys doing? Filling this place up. Turn around and look around. This is crazy. But you know what? It's kind of crazy I like. Let's give us all a hand. What do you say? I have to go on a cruise more often. <laughs> oh, I forgot something. I know you, you want another sermon? <laughs> I heard the guys did really good at uh, filming in last week. Oh, you are going to preach this sermon. <laughs> Man, I don't know about you all, but I'm thirsty. Verses. 
As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Folks, if you get to that point, that you thirst for God, like you thirst for water on a hot, hot, sweaty day, you have done something good. God will hear you, He will see you, and He will bless you. Psalm 63, 1 says, Oh God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee, my, my soul thirsteth for Thee, my flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And Psalm 143, 6 says, I stretch forth my hands unto Thee, my soul thirsteth after Thee as a thirsty land. Folks, we need to get thirsty. God. Some of us haven't been thirsty for a long time. And our Christianity has become a religion. It's something that we do because that's what we've done since we were a kid. We come to church. We go to Sunday school. We come on Wednesday because that's just what we do. But you're going to come to a point in your life where you need God so desperately that you thirst for Him. Like when your tongue and your mouth are so dry on a hot day and there's no water to be had for a long time. And the only thing that you can think about is that next drop of water. There's going to come a point in your life where you're going to need God that bad. And you need to thirst for God. You need to thirst for Him. Be thirsty for God. Isaiah 44, 3 says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. Sometimes you're going to need God to throw water to you. You're going to need to be rescued. You're going to need God's help. And things are going to have to be different. You're going to have to be desperate. Revelation 22, 17 says, And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And Psalm 81.10 says, Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Folks, so many times, we try to convince people to love God, and to come to God, and to get saved, and, and that type of thing. But you know what? I don't think anyone really gets saved until they get thirsty. When you know that you can't make it to heaven on your own, when you know who you really are, and you know the wickedness that you have done and what's inside of you and the thoughts that you think sometimes that you can't even control, and you get thirsty for God, I must have you. I've got to have you, and I can't do it myself. I need water. I need you, oh God. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for God? Luke 18, 1 to 8 puts it a different way. It's the parable of the persistent widow. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray, not to faint, saying, There was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. This lady had a need in her life that she needed her prayers answered. And she was persistent. She kept going to this judge, kept knocking on his door late at night, kept bothering him all the time in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night time. She kept bothering him because she had a need so great 
that her request needed to be answered. Sometimes we have a need so great that we need to be thirsty for God. Not the usual prayer, not the prayer, Lord, thanks for this food today, and please bless our bodies for your glory in Jesus' name, amen. Which we don't even think about anymore. But a God felt deep down in your gut, God, I gotta have it. I can't live without it. God, I need this prayer answer. God, I'm thirsty, God. I need water. Let me read you another story. It's in Genesis 32. Jacob was thirsty. He was returning back uh, to his own land from Laban's house. And his brother Esau was going to meet him. And Jacob had betrayed his brother a couple of times. And Jacob thought he was going to die at the hands of his own brother. And Jacob was thirsty for an answer from God. Genesis 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Jacob was going back to meet Esau. He thought he might die the next day. So what did he do? He got thirsty for God. He broke away from the rest of his group, which was a quite a large group, a very large troop of men, women, children, animals. He broke away, he went by himself, he, I can picture him now getting down on his knees, you know, at a, at a big rock there. And it's her praying, oh God, oh God, please save me, God. Oh Lord, I know my brother's going to kill me. I've deceived him. And even my very name, Jacob, means deceiver. And, and I've deceived my brother twice. And I stole his birthright. Oh God, please save me. And all of a sudden, Jacob feels an arm go around his neck. And, uh, and there's this man... And putting him in a chokehold. And the next thing he knows, his other arm's going back behind him. And the next thing he knows, he's in this wrestling match. And this whole time he's praying, God, please, please save me. Don't let me die tomorrow. Please let me find favor with my brother Esau. And the next thing you know, uh, Esau has turned it around and he's got a hold of the man in an in arm bar lock. And, and they're wrestling and they're wrestling all night. And Jacob's literally wrestling in prayer with Jesus. It's a theophany. It's the appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. And he's wrestling with Jesus. And, and they're, they're going back and forth. And, and one will have the other. Then the other will have one. And, and, and finally Jesus said, hey, it's starting to be day. They've wrestled all night in prayer. They've wrestled all night. And, and Jesus says, let me go. It's daylight. Everybody's going to see us. And Jacob goes, I won't let you, let you go until you bless me. And then Jesus blesses him and says, Your name will no longer be Jacob, which means deceiver. It is now Israel, which means prince of God. And Jesus just to let him know whose boss knocked his, his hip joint out of joint. And from that day forward, Jacob walked with a limp. But Jacob didn't care because that day he met with God. He wrestled all night with God in prayer. And that thirsty man was filled up. He knew that he would live. And not only that he would live, but that he would become a prince of God. One of the patriarchs in the Old Testament. When's the last time you had a burden so deep in your heart that you wrestled with God all night long? You could almost feel him. Uh, wrap his arm around you and get your arm behind your back and, and, and wanted to escape from you and you said, no! No, I'm not letting you go until I get my prayers answered. And you said,
say, well, that sounds, that sound, that doesn't sound right. You know that we would fight with God like that. But God says it's right. It's in His book. We are to wrestle with God. When God, God likes that. He likes to, God is a very passionate God. We try to make Christianity unpassionate these days. But God is a very passionate God. And He wants all of you. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. He wants your mind. He wants everything about you. Amen. He wants us, you to rest in my prayer. I remember when I came home from leave and I told you that story. I won't go into it. But I led my dad to Christ. When I came home from leave, he's the first person I ever led to the Lord. It was my own dad. And, uh, but his wife, my stepmother, wasn't saved yet. And she didn't like what was going on. You know, all this Christianity stuff. And, uh, but we got her to church one day, me and my dad. She went to church with us, a little church start. We met in the bottom of an insurance building. And uh, we were down there, we were listening to the preacher, Howard Casey. He was preaching a sermon. And it was a real powerful sermon on salvation. And, and, and it came time for the invitation. And I was praying, oh God, please let my stepmom get saved. Please let her get saved. And I could look over at her. I could see that she was starting to be under some conviction. But she wasn't going anywhere. And so I started praying. And I remembered this story about wrestling with God. And so I started wrestling with God there in the seat. I said, oh God, please let her go down. Please let her go down. Please let her get saved. And the invitation kept going. And she still had to move. And she had a hold of that chair. She wasn't going anywhere. She wasn't budging. I said, God, you've got to get her saved. It's great that I'm saved. It's great that my dad got saved. But we're not going to have a whole home, a home that works in unity unless my stepmother gets saved too. And I pray, God, please let my stepmom get saved. And I rest, I wouldn't let go, and I wouldn't let go, and I wouldn't let go. And the next thing I know, boom, she gets out of that chair and she goes forward and she gets saved. But I know it wouldn't have happened if I didn't know that story. If I didn't get thirsty for God. If I wouldn't let go of God until that prayer was answered. Some of you today, I know people, you have a deep need in your life that's been trouble to you for some time. God wants to answer your prayer. God wants to deliver you. God wants to see your loved ones get saved. God wants to answer your prayer. He wants to make you happy. We have a passionate God. And you've got to get thirsty for Him. This is the regular religious way that we do things. Is not going to work anymore? It's not going to work. That doesn't get prayers answered. I'm going to read you a story and we'll finish. This is a true story. Mommy, I'm so thirsty. I want a drink. Susanna Petrison heard her daughter's pleas. But there was nothing she could do. She and her four-year-old Guyane were trapped beneath tons of collapsed concrete and steel. And beside them in the darkness lay the body of Susanna's sister-in-law, Kareem, one of the 55,000 victims of the worst earthquake in the history of Soviet Armenia. Calamity never knocks before it enters, and this time it had torn down the door. Susanna had gone to Kareem's house to try on a dress. It was December 7th, 1988, at 11.30 in the morning. The quake hit at 11.41 a.m. She had just removed the dress and was clad in stockings and a slip when the fifth floor apartment began to shake. Susanna grabbed her daughter, but had taken only a few steps before the floor opened up and they tumbled in. Susanna, Gaini, and Kareem fell into the basement with the nine-story apartment house crumbling all around them. Mommy, I need a drink. Please give me something. And there was nothing for Susanna to give. She was trapped flat on her back, a concrete panel 18 inches above her head, and a crumbled water pipe above her shoulders kept her from standing. Feeling around in the darkness, she found a 24-ounce jar of blackberry jam that had fallen into the basement. She gave the entire jar to her daughter to eat. It was 
God man the second day. Mommy, I'm so thirsty. Susanna knew she would die, but she wanted her daughter to live. She found the dress, perhaps the one she had come to try on, and made a bed of, for Guyane. Though it was bitter cold, she took off her own stockings and wrapped them around the child to keep her warm. The two were trapped for eight days. Because of the darkness, Susanna lost track of time. Because of the cold, she lost her feelings in her fingers and toes. And because of her inability to move, she just lost hope and was just waiting for death. She began to hallucinate. Her thoughts wandered. A merciful sleep occasionally freed her from the horror of her entombment. <laughs> but the sleep would be brief, and something always wakened her, the cold or the hunger, or most often, the voice of her daughter pleading for something to drink. At some point in that eternal night, Susanna had an idea. She remembered a television program about an explorer in the Arctic who was dying of thirst. His comrade slashed open his hand and gave his friend blood. I had no water, no fruit juice, no liquids. It was then, I remember, I had my own blood. Her groping fingers, numb from the cold, found a piece of shattered glass. She sliced open her left index finger and gave it to her daughter to suck. The drops of blood were not enough. Please, mommy. Some more, cut another finger. Susanna had no idea how many times she cut herself. She only noticed that if she had not, Guyane would have died. Her blood was her daughter's only hope. We are thirsty for salvation. We are thirsty for our prayers to be answered. But only the blood of Jesus satisfies. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away sins. Mommy, I'm so thirsty. Gainey begged. And it was then I remembered I had my own blood. Susanna explained. And the hand was cut. And the blood was poured. And the child was saved. God, I'm so thirsty. And then Jesus says, it is my blood, Matthew 26, 28. It is my blood, the blood of the new agreement, Jesus stated, shed to set many free from their sins. And the hand was pierced, and the blood was poured, and the children are saved. You can't get saved unless you get thirsty. you got to want God. No one's going to force you to God. You gotta be thirsty for God. You can't get your prayers answered until you get thirsty enough, want it enough, need God enough. That's wrong. That's what's wrong with our nation today. It's wonderful to be blessed with God and be an affluent nation. But sometimes when you're affluent, you don't need God as badly as you think. And we tend to forget God. I find that's why Jesus went to the poor so often. They knew they had a need. And they, they knew anything that Jesus could give them, they were interested. But folks, there is a line by us unseen, a place I know not where, that marks the destiny of man between eternity despair. How many times have you heard the gospel that you were not thirsty? Today could be your last day. In the last church I came from, up in Maconan, Texas, Valley New Baptist Church, I preached this uh, a similar message about how you need to respond to God when He's tugging at your heart. Because you may not always feel that tug. There's this line that you could pass where the Holy Spirit says, no more. You had enough. 
Her name was Jane. She was our Tammy Sunday School teacher, adult women's class. She came up to me after church and she goes, Well, Glenn, that's true. I've heard that preached before, but I didn't know if it was really true. But I was a young teenage girl. And every Sunday, we went to church every Sunday, the preacher would have an invitation, and I'd feel the tug of the Holy Spirit. And I'd say, No, no. I'm not going, no, I'm going to be embarrassed. No, I'm not going up now. No, my friends will see me. No, I'm not going to be a laughing stock. No, no. And then she said, one Sunday, she heard the Holy Spirit or Jesus, God in some form, audibly speak to her in her ear and said, this is your last chance. I'm not going to call you again. And she jumped up out of that pew and ran to the front. He got saved. Maybe this is your last chance. Heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And would you like to serve Him for the rest of your life? Yes. So today we're going to show everybody out there this decision that you've made today. And as your preacher, I want, I want to tell you I'm very proud of you. You're a very good girl. And thank you for being thirsty for Jesus. Okay, if you put your hands on your nose. <laughs> by the authority invested in me, by this church, and by the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you, Elizabeth, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here we go. Praise the Lord, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. 